Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 24th, 2017 edition of the Sandnet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Xavier came across a pretty interesting, malicious looking email. Now, this email has a Portuguese subject that states that it does request a product budget. Now, it does load a script that then, and that's where it gets interesting, really installs a binary that is validly signed with an Avast certificate. Now, it identifies itself as the Avast Safe Zone browser. It does add some firewall rules, again, sort of odd and interesting, and then adds itself to the run registry in order to gain persistence. Not really clear what the end game is here, whether it's actually the valid uh, Safe Zone browser, but that would be odd. Uh, behavior doesn't really match there, or whether this is some kind of malware that actually managed to adopt that particular certificate. Now, the malware was downloaded via a CDN, which did have a valid Azel certificate, but it just used the host name for this particular CDN, so that's no real big surprise there. One reader actually commented that the SafeZone browser may be legit, that it is the actual SafeZone browser, but it's really just used to execute malicious DLLs that are actually being delivered with this particular executable. But by actually presenting a signed and valid binary, people are more likely going to execute it. And Minecast made big news uh, yesterday with a new attack that they describe as a rope maker. Now, what they're really talking about is, is the use of externally hosted style sheets in email. So if you're receiving an HTML email, there is of course the option to add style sheets to that email. These style sheets may be hosted on an external web server. They're not actually part of the email address. So what an attacker can do after the email is delivered, they can then swap out that style sheet on their web server. And with that, of course, they can change how the email is being displayed, either, for example, hiding code, adding code, or just uh, changing out links in emails. In my opinion, this exploit was actually quite a bit oversold here. It's really nothing different than having a link to an external image, for example, and then have that image being swapped on the web server after the email was displayed for the first time. Just with style sheets, of course, that's all a little bit more obfuscated and hidden from the user. As far as defenses go, there isn't really a great defense here other than not loading any style sheets that are hosted on external servers, just like you really shouldn't load any images that are hosted on external servers that are not actually part of the email because they're often used for tracking and of course could also deliver additional malicious code. So this particular attack does not affect what is stored within the user's mailbox. The only thing that changes is that external style sheet that is actually never delivered to the user's inbox, but only loaded by the mail reader as the email is viewed. And Microsoft released its security intelligence report. And uh, one of the highlights here is that attacks against cloud-based user accounts have increased by 300% from last year. Now, I don't think that surprises anybody. We have seen this over the last years that in particular attacks against, for example, webmail accounts are way up. You really, really, really have to use two-factor authentication for these accounts. And Microsoft also points out that, and I'm quoting here, a large majority of these compromises are the result of weak guessable passwords and poor password management. And then they also mention phishing and breaches of third-party services, which of course can then also lead to shared passwords being leaked to an attacker. 
if you recall WannaCry, one of the contributing factors to how it spread was uh, the breach of an Ukrainian accounting software company, Medoc. Well, apparently Medoc isn't the only Ukrainian accounting software company with this particular problem. There is now a report by Ukrainian security company ISSP Labs that identifies Crystal Finance Millennium or CFM as another accounting software company in the Ukraine, a competitor of Medoc, that actually apparently has very similar problems. Now, while WannaCry was sort of special in difference, the samples recovered from Crystal Finance Millennium, however, appear to me more random average malware. Still not good to have companies like that being compromised and their software distribution mechanisms being used in order to spread malware. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.